basically um uh what's the called revision yeah so you fill the form we'll go through the forms the questions and everything together so um the first question is coming from messy rest operator so rest operator is like um is like you have a container yeah I have a container when my system starts slowing like this i need to like restart it so like let's assume i have a container yeah and inside this container we have um we have um five items inside yeah so now i want to share these five items between two people let's say i want to share the five items between um john and james yeah so i have five items and i want to share it between john and james yeah so now if i should give one item to 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 john how many items do i have left can you guys hear me oh, can you come again yeah i have i have i have a container yeah and i have five items inside so I want to share these five items between John and James. Yeah. So out of the five items, I gave one to John. How many items do I have left? Four. Four. four yeah. Then. So now four. So now I can decide to give the remaining four to James. Yeah. So now John is having one item and James is having four. So that four now, eh? Instead of me to be like taking it one after the other, oh yeah, John, take the second item. James, take the second item. Take the third item, take the fourth item, take the fifth item. I can do spread preto or rest of preto. Yeah, that means the remaining item belongs to to James. I don't know if you get the concept. I have five items in a container. Let me. No, no, don't worry. It's, no, it won't die now. Just wanted to boost it. All right, I'll save. So let's assume this is a container now. Let's assume I have an array. Orange. And yeah, positive. And zero. Let me see. Eraser. Let's say Jota. Yeah, can you guys see my Yes. Hello, it's my screen. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, so now this orange now. I want to okay, I want to share this item between John and James. So if I give John this orange now, I still have four items left in inside the array so i can decide to just give this remaining four items to james so instead of me of doing of saying okay pen go to come on james come and take pen james come and take biro james come and take eraser james come and take jota yeah i can do that like i want to give james the rest of the of the item at, at once so that is what is called rest operator do we do we get the gist now yes yeah so that is rest operator so you don't have to like start assigning assigning the the what's it called the the remaining um the remaining item cool. The remaining item to to james so that's that's what rest operator does so let's let's look for example let me see if i just see one simple example they'll just okay i think this is this one is 
pretty straightforward. So now, from the example I explained the other time, we have an array that are numbers. Yeah. So let me name this one. Um, okay. Let me just do console. So now, let me name this John by to be. Don't. So now, from the explanation I did the other time, we have an array, we have six items in the array, yeah? So the first item I gave it to John, yeah? So the second item I gave it to James. So now, the third item I want to give it to Malik. Also the fourth item, the fifth item, the sixth item. Then we are getting all those items from number. So we've declared number here as an array of number. So now, the first item now goes to John, the second one goes to James, then the third one goes to Malik, fourth, fifth, sixth. So instead of me writing Malik multiple times, like, okay, Malik this, Malik that, I just use rest operator. So now it's going to give, can we, can, we, can we all see my screen? So one now is for John, the first one, then the second one, then the third one, the fourth one, and the fifth one, and the sixth one is for Malik. Do you, do you, do you get the gist now? Yes. yes. So, so this is how rest operator work and spread our portal too yeah so we've gotten the gist now so the structuring now so the structuring basically means um i have i have um i have i have i have an object yeah and i have something inside so i will know that okay when we when we when we work on objects let me compare example of an object here okay object person so now we have this object person if i console log if i console log um console dot log we will see my screen yes okay yes. so you can see this object now containing name joy age 13 color green fruit is an array country web lady nation yeah so probably let's let's let us say i i sent this object to another page now let's say the application i design now i i need this object somewhere else and after that place i need it another place again yeah so it might be too heavy for me to be sending this object about when it's just probably it's just one thing that i need yeah so there's no need of me sending this object to let's say um what's it called to 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 another page or 
to the third or fourth page when it's just probably his name I want to use. Yeah. So that's where um, what's it called? Destructuring now comes in. So instead of me sending the old person um object, I can just destructure what I want from from this object and just and just go my way. So instead of sending names, I can do something like const. Yeah, const. What do I need? I just want to pick only Joyce name and um and and let's say let's say color. So I can just do name and color from what from person object. So now instead of saying console log this console log that I can just say name. I can also console log color. You can see on the console, my guy joy, then green. So I've I've picked I've picked out my name. Sorry, it's um what's it called? Is underlining the name is somehow a reserve keyword, that's why, but don't worry. So now um I, I picked out name. Okay, let me pick out country so that this will not happen to confuse us. So I've destructured name and country from this object. So anyway, I want to use this name and country. Now I don't have to like this. You know, we know that before, if I want to like get this um name now, I will do um console.log person dot um person dot color or i would do uh, person dot uh country yeah but now so instead of accessing the object like this now i just said to to just destructure because there are some there are some code base that you work with that you see an object will contain over 30 to 40 uh, key value pairs and you don't you don't want to like continue carrying the objects about you just want to like pick what you need from that um from that object in 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 react we call it props most most of the time when you start working with react now you hear something like props 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 now when you start passing props from components all you want to do is just destructure what you win because in in, in react you want to do something like um props dot pressing then you now do dot um, what's it called dot name to get the person's name. So instead of writing this chain now, props dot person dot name, you can just do you can just do something like this. Pick out name from props dot anyway you, any you want to like use name now. You don't have to start writing props dot person dot name. You just put name only there. Yeah, let me remove this. So it will be confusing. So we'll get the gist now. Like this. Probably I don't need the fruits, none of my concern, the color is the age. All I need is just the name and the country. So instead of me carrying along all these um objects, um person objects, I just pick out this is the old way we are used to. Then I just the structure here. The structure. I just destructure name, color, and country. Then if I check my console, I have my color and country. So hope we got that right. Yeah, please I have a question. Okay. So for the fruits now, we have more than three um values. So I want apple. Yes. From fruits. Yeah. So yeah. So now you destructure, you destructure, you know, when you destructure now, it's going to pick the key value here. So you're going to pick this now. So you first destructure your fruits. Yeah. Yeah. So now probably you can now say, okay, fruits, anyway, you want to use it now. Let's say another console.log. You know that it's fruits. Then the, what's it called? The second one is going to be one. But if we put it directly, it is going to work. That would be against um against law of javascript yeah it's not going to work 
So you get, so you destructure your fruit first. Yeah, if I go to my console now, and see we have orange, apple, grape, but um, I only want apple, yeah. So what I can do is just from the array, I pick out the second one. So as we all know that array start from index of zero. I need to close this. So I should have up on the console. Where is that coming from? I think that's pretty good. 772. 772. Mm -hmm. This should work. Yeah. So, so we have Apple on the on the console. So you, you understand the concept, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, okay. So we had okay. The last one is lateral um, template lateral. Yeah. So, okay, you're welcome. So um, we when we did concatenation, we know that okay. Let's assume I want to concatenate everything with um with written now. I can say, um, let's final answer equals to color of country plus, you can put a space, another plus, I can put a space. Uh, plus color. Plus another space, plus um, fruits, then second one, yeah. So I can now say console, console, dot log, revision, answer. I don't know what's happening. It's like today's class is not. Are we? Um, okay, that's one. We are complete. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So um, I can console log um final answer. So let me see our final answer. So oh, that's a wrong spelling. Revision. Okay. Revision plus final answer. I want to ask a question. Yeah, go on, please. Okay. Um, I'm sorry if I'm drawing you guys back, but why do we keep putting um something like that revision now? Why did you put it? My okay, guys, yeah, just it, put it's, yes, some, yeah, it's uh, my the, way of, uh, it's, Yeah, it's my way of um what's it called? Differentiating different console.log. You can just remove it. It's nothing. Yeah, you know, in, in code base, you might have a lot of console, so you want to know the particular one. Yeah, so there are sometimes that you want to do, um, let's say, console.log2, um, yeah. So I have, I have um, what's it called, 42 on the console now, although the, the page will tell you the line that, I, that is coming from, but sometimes you don't really have time to check that line. So now to differentiate these tools now, so I'll just put something at the front to know the particular one. So it's just a way of me debugging my console. It's nothing special. Hope you get that. Yes, yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah. So it's nothing special. So I can just leave it like this. It's fine. It's just a way of me like um getting to know where the code is coming from. So we have uh, on the console now we have we have three ladies, nation, green, and apple. Yeah. That is because it's coming from here, right? So now, if you want to talk about um, template tracer, right? So instead of me doing this concatenation like this, there is a way I can do it and say, let's answer second equals to this back tick. Can we all see it? This back tick like this. Yes. I will just put it, put a dollar sign then put open curly braces like this. Then I'll take all this my variable, put it inside, then space. So instead of me writing all these plots, I can write everything I want inside, inside the lateral string. Yeah, color, 
go out again. Another one, fruits, then at point one. We can see it. So now if I say, also dot log, final answer second. Let me see my screen. You can see the answer is the same. Yeah, but the second one is cleaner. You can see here now, I have to write country plus put space, color plus this. But this one, I just write my lateral string and I just, so it's basically the same, but one is cleaner. So that's it. So there are sometimes that you just have um, a lot of variables, yeah, that you you want to, to like um, do this way. Sometimes you want to write um, an API that is dynamic, yeah. Take for instance now, you have API that says www.gogu dot com um dot com slash slash name yeah so this name now can be anybody's name so if i if i want to make this dynamic now i can say um i can say um, let me even put it in a function actually okay let's be let's be more what's it called um, let's let's write a function I just want to take you guys back a little bit. All, all my websites. Oh shit! What have I done? All my websites. Okay, let's do it like this. We are setting name. Yeah. So I can just say console. log. So, so what's my answer? I can say const answer equals to then I use my lateral string. Yeah. So I want to do I want to do this. Then this name now. I want to make it dynamic. So anybody's anybody's name that I put there will be what is going to display. So console.log. So let's call this function now. Let's call it it Malik Jean Roy Hola. Yeah. So now and we all see the links. Google.com slash Malik, Jane, Joy, Bola, Vicky. It thing keeps changing because it's that we make we made it dynamic now. So lateral string now is just like replacing concatenation in such a way that you can just use a single line. Hope we got that. Can I ask a question, please? Yeah, yeah, go on. Yes, so is lateral string the same thing as interpolation? Uh, is lateral string the same thing as interpolation? No. Okay, I think it's the same thing. I've not, I've not really heard of, um, or I've not perhaps not really used interpolation. I think it's the same. How do interpolation is string in JavaScript? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So when you interpolate, you're actually using a lateral string. So it's the same. Use a le template lateral to interpolate a variable in a string. So yeah, who has the question? So yeah, it's the same. It's the same. Sorry about that. It's the same. Yeah. So when you are interpolating, you are also you are going to like use um lateral string. I'm used to lateral string. I don't know if you can also call it um interpolation. So thank you for that. It's also the same. They are the same. So now do we do we understand the concept now? I have a question. Uh, Messi. Yeah, so you get the gist now, right? Yeah, yeah, go on. Okay, so um, 
I have two questions, but first I would like to confirm if um, um, rest operator and spread operator, I know you said they work um, alike, but are they the same thing or they have a little difference? Uh, let me confirm that. Most of the time I use um, rest operator. Okay, okay, okay. No, they are not the same. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. They are not okay. the same. So I I've discussed um I think I discussed um rest, rest operator, operator, right? Yeah, for sorry, sorry, please. It's not the same. Um rest operator. Okay. Sorry about that. So, but but we get the concept of um, lateral string, right? Before I discuss, um, no, I don't. Operator. Sorry, that's my that's what my second question is going to come in. Okay, so lateral string basically is just replacing concatenation. Yeah, we talked about concatenation, like when you want to country plus we put a space here, plus a space okay. color plus space then fruit. Yeah, so instead of writing it this way, you can just write a back tick like this yeah then you write anything you want to write you just put it inside you get then now if you want to put a variable inside yeah that variable might be might be dynamic you just put a dollar sign a curly brace then the name of the variable you understand the name of the variable okay so now the variable is okay. going to display there yeah so the variable can be a number null undefined it's going to display you get so instead of you doing concatenation of string this plus this plus this so basically lateral string is just another way of doing concatenation all right so if i get you correctly now so if as each of the values or the yeah, values are being con yes. concatenated with concatenated this dollar together. sign here it's going yes, to yes. yes it's going to read all the details of country even if it's more than one plus the details of colors Plus no, no. If, if, it, if it is more than one, it might throw an error. Like this country now, let's assume this because you know we have this country to be just a string. Yeah. If it okay. is a number, fine, it will go. If it is this, it will go. If it is an if it is an array like this, yeah, I, it might want to just display the whole array. Let me even let the me try. Array. Okay. Yeah. Let me even. Let me look at this example. How is going to display it? You see, it brought out the whole array. Okay. Yeah. So let me try. Let me try objects. So basically, just like concatenating um, values. Yeah. The major difference is just it makes the code neater and saves time okay. in writing. Yeah yes yes exactly yeah okay. so your code will be neater and shorter yeah so um so let's quickly talk about um spread of print you. yeah you're welcome spread operator so now yeah spread operator is like um it's it's like concatenation also but then you you don't really want to use that um inbuilt concatenation take for instance now when you have um you have you have two arrays let's say let's array one equals to one comma a Null, five, yeah, and I have let array two equals to mm, let me say twenty three comma string two. Mm, let me change this right to not be confusing. Yeah. 
Uh, let me add one more. It's fun. Um, yeah. So these are all variables. Yeah, inside an array. So what's spread operator like? I want to. I want to like bring these two together. I want to merge them together. Yeah. So I can do. There's a an array method that can say that, that I can do. I can say final result equals to array one dot concatenate concat array two. Yeah. So if I console dot log so dot log. Dot log final result. You can see that in the final result we have eight items now. Yeah, we have one, two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So when we concatenate them, it's like we join them together. Yeah, so we now have eight items. So we have one, eight, null, five, twenty-three, joined through and undefined. Yeah, so this is using concatenation. Yeah, but we want to use spread operator. So in spread operator, now I will say let final result two equals to an array. Then I will now spread everything that is inside the array one and everything that is inside array two yeah like i will spread the whole value inside the the area can do say dot 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 yeah array array one and command then dot 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 array two so what this is going to do is get another array then inside that array so now go to array one which is this one and take everything that is inside. You want to spread everything inside this array one, inside this array. So it's going to take one a null five. Spread it a. Yeah. Let me let me consider to log this so that I will remove final this final result too. So let me remove this one first. As if, when I save this, I see that it's it's containing four items. Yeah, four variables: one, a, null, and five. So, so I spread everything from array one into this final result array. So if I should add the next one now, dot dot dot, array two. So it's going to spread everything inside array two into this array also. So our final array will now be a combination of this and this. So we see it. We see that there's no difference between it. So we've basically concatenated um the two arrays instead of using this method. Method one. So we've used this. So this is what spread operator is. You've spread everything inside um inside the inside the um the two. The two arrays. So did we get the gist now? Yes. So yes, yes, basically, yeah, spread operator does. So now there are sometimes that you don't um you don't really know what because this example I gave now is because we know what the the uh, the array the array contains, yeah. But there are sometimes that you don't know what the array contains, you just know that okay, there is something inside the array, yeah. So you just spread this array spread the second one also then you get the total um the total array yeah so you might not like be seeing the use case now but as you progress higher, uh, yeah, like you see more uh, complex code base you see um how uh, how it's it works um i've closed down i've closed down some of the projects i worked on i would have showed you um some examples but yeah hope you just you you got the concept yeah so Messi, your first question has has taken much of our time so let's go to the second one so Messi and everyone so we hope we understand the concepts now 
Yes, a lot. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's go to the next one. So the next one said loop. So um loop loop in um in in programming is the same thing as um the way we have it in in science when we say loop we are trying to like loop through something take for instance now we are attending a class and we and the teacher say okay everybody should line up yeah we are 10 right so now okay let's let's assume um let's assume we have a class and we the, the teacher said we should not make noise we started making noise and you now say okay for for that reason we're going to flog everybody let's say two two strokes of cane yeah so now said everybody should line up yeah so now if the first person should collect the two cane what will happen yeah anybody to move to the next person number exactly it will move to the next person yeah so either that person will step aside or just go and sit down yeah so it will move to the next person so after that second person now moves to the third person fourth person fifth so what the teacher is doing is basically looping so it's looping through the students yeah so when it gets to the last person probably maybe it's not satisfied say okay i want to start again oh yeah the first person so that is looping so you are going from one to the next one to the next one so in uh in javascript we have different types of loops we have um for loop we have um for each loop we have while loop we have um i think we talked about switch yeah we have switch also uh maybe we should just speak like two and talk about and talk about types of loops let me just pick one of Too. So I think well, that is the most important one that a lot of students understand. So um, let's talk about for loop. So now we've understand the concept of loops that okay, is used to like um, to like move from one um, from one item to another. So now for for loop now, if you want to like um, use a for loop, a for loop is this is the syntax for for loop. I'm coming. Let me just write it and I'll explain it. You have four like this, and you have the code block. So inside this code block, that's where you write your 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 code, anything that you want the code to do for you. But then inside these two curly braces in this bracket, is where you put your condition. Yeah. So now you want to loop through ten students. Yeah. Okay. One after the other. What if I want to like beat the first student skip the second one beat the third one skip the fourth one beat the fifth one skip the sixth one on and on like that so you can also put the condition like that so the condition might be anything take for instance the way we do an if statement that we write if this condition is met okay do this yeah we know that when we have when we have okay if leak pause pause true oh, yeah do something yeah this is if statement right for for loop also this condition we must put it also for the for us to achieve what we want to achieve so now as we know that we we are always going to be looping through items we, you, are, you are going to have a starting point yeah that starting point then you have to to have a condition that must be met yeah so they are called expressions you are, you are you for four loops you're basically going to have three expression expression one expression two expression three so this expression one is going to be your starting point so when i said the students should line up i might say that i don't want to start from the first one i might say that i want to go and start from the back let me beat the last person, then the ninth person, the eighth person, and upward like that. Or I might decide that, okay, I want to start from two, skip the first person. Okay, maybe the first person is a quiet person, and I know that this person is always quiet in my class. Okay, I want to skip the first person. Yeah, so you have a starting point. Yeah, then you have a condition that's, that is always met. Condition 
So if that condition is met, then we still continue. Then the third one will now be incremental. Increment. So this increment now is, okay, you started from, um, I, I want to like skip the first one. The first, the first person, okay, I know that this person is always quite in my class. So I'm starting from the second person. Yeah, so I've, I have a starting point, let's say two. Then now, the, I have a condition. Okay, in as much as there's still student on the queue, I want to continue flogging. Yeah, I have 10 people on the queue. I can't flog 11 people, it's not possible because they are just 10. I can't beat a spirit, yeah? So now, if in as much as there are still people on that queue, I want to continue flogging them. That is a condition. Then I want to increment. So I go to the next person. That's the third expression. So when we start using it, you understand. So did you get the logic now? So for the for loop, you need three expression. Your starting point, the condition that must be met, yeah? Then the increment. I might say that, okay, I want to skip the first person and start from the second person. Yeah, and I don't want to beat the third person also. I want to go to the fourth person. That's the condition on increment. Yeah, so now let's, let me say, okay, I have 10 students. Let's say I want to start from I. Let's assume So we are starting from zero. We can start from one, but we know that um, what's it called? Index in, in JavaScript starts from zero. So you can start from one, you can start from zero, but mostly it's good when you start from zero. Then you put a semicolon. Then I want, and I want to say, in as much as I is less than 10, less than or equal to 10, and say less than or equal to 10, because we have 10 students. Yeah, that's a condition. I less than or equal to 10. If I say I less than or equal to nine now, it will not reach the 10th person. If I say I equals to or less than 11, that means I want to like include one more person. So now, then I will now say I plus plus. So this, I don't know if we talked about um, this kind of increment. If I write I, if I declare I like this, let's, I equals to zero, yeah. If I do, if I do I plus plus, it means I've increased I. So what this plus plus means is that I've done something like I equals to I plus one, which means you know that here I is equals to zero, yeah. So now I want to like increase I by one, so that I cannot say i new i now so this i that is zero plus one so it's zero plus one is one so the new value of i is going to be one so now we'll now take this one and come and store it here so i is now one so if i do another plus plus again so it will now come and say okay i that is one before plus another one making it two so the new value of i equals to two did we understand that logic yes yes so now this is the increment i'm talking about so we i can say that okay i don't want to i want to be skipping one person i can say i um equals to i plus two yeah so instead of doing i plus plus i want to do i plus two so it's, it will be skipping one person so it's just two two so the value of i is going to be two two but let's just start with plus plus first so that you understand the concept so now the first loop now let, let's what we just do, let's just console log dot log our i so that we'll see see how the loop is going to go and save and let's go to our console okay this will throw it off let me comment this out and this also yeah so let's go to our console can we see so we started from zero then one two three four five six seven up to ten so if i want to start from one now all i have to do is just to say i start from one and i click save and 
on our console can see that one, two, three. So let me let me explain how it works. So now i is equals to one. Well, that's our starting point, right? Are we together? Yes. Okay. So now and I said one, yeah, i equals to one, right? I equals to one. Yeah. So the next one is this. So what's our starting point? One. That's I equals one. That's our starting point. Yeah. So now the next one is condition. Okay. You now say I less than or equal to 10. One less than or is one less than or equal to 10. Anybody? No. Yes. It's less than 10. Yeah, who said Okay, no? it's less than equals to 10. Okay, you've gotten the distance. So now it's one less than or equal to 10. Yeah, one is less than one is less than 10. So that is true. Yeah. So since that is true, it's to just enter enter the code block. This is true. Yeah. So it will enter the code block, then do what inside this code block? It will print. It will print. It will print. It will print one for us. Then immediately after printing the one, then it will now come out again and come and increment i. Yeah. So i was one before, so i is now two. So our i value has changed. Yeah. So now it will now go again. So i is now equals to two. So is I, which is two, less than or equal to 10? I'm asking. It's less than 10. Yes. Okay. So now it will now do the same thing again. Enter the loop, enter the code block again. Print out two for us. Yeah. So it will go outside again, go and increment I. So do the same thing again. Is three less than 10? True. It will print three for us until it gets to nine nine less than 10 or equal to 10 yes it will print nine for us then it will now go again go and increment nine to 10 and to now come again 10 less than or equal to 10 is it true or false it's true no. why, why is it because why is it true? The ten. It's because i true. is i is equal to 10 after i is when i is now nine Mm -hmm. to add one again which means yeah. 10, 10 and mm -hmm. i is equal to 10 10 okay so now that's because you see this condition now we have um we have two conditions here less than or equal to 10 so 10 is not less than 10 but 10 is equal to 10 which is true so that's why it's going to print this 10 so it will now go again go and increment 10 to become 11 it will now come 11 less than or equal to 10 that is false it not false, yeah. yes so it will just false. break out of the for loop you get the gist now so that's how for loop works so here now we are just using I mean, numbers yeah so is it that is it that um one condition has to be met before it can print out anything yes 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 this has to be true this condition has to be true it will continue printing until it's false. Okay, now let me let me try to crash this my browser now. Um let me crash, let me crash this my browser. Let me say I one less than infinity. Can you see my browser will crash now? So it's still running 73,000, 100, 1000 plus. Can you guys see it? So that's an infinite that's an infinite loop can you see where it stop one seven eight nine two five can we all see it so it will keep running yeah, yeah even my even my system is making noise because it's <laughs> it's it's making the system do a lot of work that's an infinite loop so one will always be less than 10 like till tomorrow 
next tomorrow, one will never ever be more than 10. Yeah. So that condition is true. So in as much as that condition is true, yeah, it will continue running until the condition is no longer met. Yeah. So if I should save this now. Yeah, it's making my browser slow. <laughs> Let it just come up. Uh, I shouldn't have done that. Top. Can you guys hear me? Sorry, Malik, sorry to draw you back. Uh, how okay. did you come about this long digits and everything? I, I lost my network. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. okay. So we somebody asked that, um, why are we like having the one to, to 10? So it's because the condition is always met. If this condition is true, it will continue entering the block and, and print until the condition is no longer met. Yeah. So we created an infinite loop. So I changed. I change this um, i to one, yeah. And we know that one less than ten is true. So it will enter the code block. It will check again. Increment i, but we are not using i. We are just using one. That's the condition I put there. So the one that statement will always be true because one will always be less than ten, yeah. So that's how it's printed okay. those um long strings. This thing has crashed the browser. So, so sorry just to confirm so in place of yeah. that thing you put infinity there no no i didn't put infinity i just changed this to one let me i don't want to repeat the same thing again instead of i i change this to one you know ideally we are we started i equals to one that's our starting point okay. then we have a condition that says i less than or equal to 10 and our i is okay. going to be one from initial but we change then it's going to increment i but here now we now mean one to be permanent there yeah so the first one will now be i equals to one one less than or equal to ten which is true is going to enter the code block yeah okay which is going to print out i equals to one because i is equals to one yeah then it will now go again increment i to two yeah then it will now come and ask here again one less than or equal to ten ideally we are supposed to put i here but because we change okay. it to one and one will always be less than 10 which is going to be true that's why we enter that infinite loop and it has crashed my browser so let me close it and oh, what have i done mm. Hello. We can hear you. Okay, yeah. Um the browser, the thing crashed. So I need to like um what's it called restart my system. So just five minutes, please.
Hello, Malik. How are you there? See, you guys, I joined with my phone. I'm trying to, yeah, I restart my system. The browser crashed the, what's it called? The infinite loop crashed the browser. You guys should not try it on your system. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to ask. That for those using a weak on... system, will he, will he render the system useless? No, 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 it um, won't. <laughs> it's an infinite loop. It will just, no, no, ideally, it will crash the browser. And the, the browser will just like stay frozen. Then you just have to like exit it and launch it again. But then, you know, my system has been acting up since. I just needed to like restart it. I also did it to so my phone. You did it. <laughs> I just, I just restarted it. No, uh, when I see that right. it's ending, then someone now drop a message that it's crash. So, ah, I'm gonna have to close the <laughs> page immediately. So I was also <laughs> the everything is testing now. Yeah, that's a, that's that's an infinite loop. That's what it does. And another thing that that does crash browser again is what we call um memory leak. Yeah. So it's like for loop also when you have um a function that keeps calling itself. Yeah. You might have a, a what's it called, a memory leak. But um something like uh, what's it called? Infinite loop like this do cause um browsers to crash. So you don't want to like do that in any code base. If not, you will not be able to spend your weekend. They will just be calling you. Database is down. Our app is is down. Things like that. But just few minutes, it's all it's coming up. Okay, Malik. Sorry to draw you back in. Okay. I, I'm still a bit confused um, about um, the infinity um, parameter. What makes it infinity? Is it that because you may you removed the eye? Which is supposed to be what is what um, um one we keep adding to. Is it because you remove the I and replace it with one? So yes. We, okay. So that then condition now, that condition now. One can you hear me? Yes, I can, can hear you. Okay. For, from the normal from the normal numeric um numbers that we know we know that one two three four five six seven if we wake up tomorrow morning by god's grace that number will still be the same it's still going to be one to ten next tomorrow next month next so that one will always be greater than ten we only that ten is bigger than if if i drop one error now and ten error say pick the big one all pick yeah so now the condition i now put is 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 oh. one less than or equal to 10. so the answer is, is so now it's, it's going to enter the loop now print one then okay. to increment i equals to two and ask again is one less than 10. okay increment again to three is one less than 10 it will print increment it to four it's one less than ten that's how it will be going to the... okay i think i understand now because i was actually yeah. thinking that when it gets to ten it's meant to stop yeah that's because we use i okay 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 okay. okay the okay, first okay. condition that we did is we use i less than or equal to ten but the value of i is one then we increment to two it will not ask that time the value of i has changed to two okay so basically if so you the, actually want to stop at say 500 so it will be yes i is less than or equal to five or equal to 500 yeah okay I think I yes exactly Thank because you. i now is dynamic i will keep changing but the one that crashed the browser is just so it's always it's always true yeah I don't know. My brother is not coming. So provided on. I keep I okay. Okay, yeah, go provided on. Provided I keep provided I add like a random um number. Now in the case now I can only pass for a number. I had a number a random rather number saying if it is less than or equal to something, it will keep looping and looping and looping to infinity. On um, no, it it's only 
it's always true. It will you get, sorry. It will it will keep looping to infinity if the con is when, true. We, when, when we tried with I, yeah, when I less than I it goes to eleven. I became eleven, yeah. So now eleven less than or equal to ten is break out. You get the yeah, gist now. Up. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's this should be my next. Malik, as you are talking, the net as in keep breaking in between, so it's not clear. I'm coming. Let me try. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is I less than or equal to 10. Yeah. I started from one. Then the condition is I less than or equal to 10. So we replace I with one. Then that condition okay. is true. One less than I. Yeah. So it's going to run the code block, console.log. Then I is increment now. So I is now true. Yeah, so when I ask again, is two less than or equal to 10? It's true. It's going to run the console.log. It's going to do that until it gets to nine. It will do the same. So it's 10 less than or equal to 10. That is true because 10 is equal to 10. It will run it again. Okay. Yeah, so it will now ask again, 11 less than or equal to 10. That is false because 11 is greater than 10. So it will just break out of the loop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, so for that of the one, okay, I'm, I'm with you. Sorry. So for, so for that of the infinite loop, the reason why we are getting the infinite loop is that we started from one, right? I is equal to one. Yeah. So we now ask one less than or equal to ten is true. It's going to run the first one, which is one. Then we increment i. To be two, right? But now we are not using that two to check the condition. We do only put one there. Okay. So and one less than or equal to ten will always be true because one is less than ten. So it will keep going like that, incrementally going, going, going until the browser crashes. Okay. So if if that condition was like say ten less than or equals to fifty, it will start from eleven. Uh, that's no 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 that's the condition if you, want, if you want to start from 11 you will use i you use i equals to 11 that as the starting okay. point okay okay yes 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 yeah. okay so okay. now um let me stop my browser okay is up somebody should tell me not to to go into infinite loop again Okay, let me try joining back with my sister. Sorry, Malik, if you had set the condition to like a million, would would you have um giving the same results with this um browser crash uh it might not crash the browser because that one is defined so the the browser will know that okay it's going to a million yeah but now the ram of your system can it carry it as my system is like my system now is 16 gig ram maybe like as i'm using maybe 32 gig ram or maybe 64 gig ram it might carry it but it's, it's the what's it called? The browser got to crash at I think hundred and one hundred and seventy eight thousand. Yeah. But if you put one million, that's defined. Yeah, the browser will know that the code already know that okay, this is what it's going to do. But the RAM might not be able to carry it. When you have something that is finite, like you know the specific position that you will stop, is better. Yeah, the the RAM are just like okay, prepare itself for what it's going to do. But infinite. Infinity, you don't know where you're going to stop. Yeah, but please don't try with the large number. So that it won't crash your browser. 
you can just try it it's, let's say 500 100 1000 maximum Sorry, Malik, were you talking about um, the RAM for our laptop or what? Yes, RAM for laptop. What? So, my own is 4 gig. Let me know for my, <laughs> for my own gun crash. I beg you. The one is 4 gig RAM. Okay. Yes, please. What this we should not do? I just stepped out for a minute. I didn't hear the last part. Malik, I better come again. Uh -huh. Look, I guys hear me. Yes. Look, I guys hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, yes. okay, okay, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that um you can just try with a thousand, like one thousand, so that you don't have to like crash your browser also because of the system RAM. Because you know you are going to be like be loading up the, the RAM, it's going to be doing a lot of work. So um so we get the concept of for loop now, right? Because of time, so that we can move to so we are okay with this, are we? Yeah, so... Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, Messi, it's like, it's only a question we'll be treating for today. So let me check the next... Oh, go go for So, Malik, to make something clear. So you advise us that to start, we, should, we shouldn't start with one, we should start with zero. Yes, 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 start with zero because, um, what is it called? array you know in javascript now the index starts from zero so always start from zero because sometimes you might be looping through an array okay let, let me let me say for instance now let me cite this example can you guys see my screen yes, yes you can yes yeah let me uh gene ray web range yeah let's assume i was told to console.log the the values of this object at every index so how many do we have one two three four five so now in this situation now i want to start from one then the length of the array because i don't know what the length is the array dot length we've talked about length right so this is not new the buzzer is the whole of this array the length of it so i want to console.log the my array at index of i uh polygon so can we see on my console i have ray web orange apple then on why jane is not on the console Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. We're breaking. Uh... I'm still breaking. Network, come on. What about now? It's fair now. Okay. Yeah. So I said, can somebody tell me why Jane is not on the console? And it started from Ray, Web, Orange, and Apple, then undefined. Because Jane is zero. Y ray is one. So it started from ray exactly. and stop at apple. Exactly. exactly. So now you will all know that the index of an array starts from zero. So you might probably want to be working with arrays. So it's ideally it's good when you start from zero. Yeah. 
so that you can know that you are taking cons into consideration everything you can see so jane ray web orange apple then this undefined the reason why we are it's because of we put um less than or equal to yeah so it's still going to like try to loop through the this thing and get the value so if we put um just less than like this it will remove hello That. Is so this, uh, yeah, yeah my my net my network is mixing up. Sorry. Stop hearing for a while, please. Can you come again? Thank you. Okay. On the on the last the last thing I said, right? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We lost you when you were explaining why um the last one is showing undefined instead of gene. Okay, 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 okay. So um sorry about that. So let me put it back. Less than or equal to this. And if I save this game. So the, the reason why it's it's showing undefined is we have um array of lengths one, two, three, four, five. So we assume we don't know the length. Yeah, because the array might be big, you don't know the length. That's why we are using array dot length so that the computer will just calculate the length for us. So if I if I do console dot log array dot length length. Yeah, we see that it's five. So I don't need to bother myself. So it's just this five now is the same thing as writing five year yeah but i don't know the actual length so that's why i can't write five so this now might be i can even make this now it will be more than that for my year and paste it you can see that it's now 10. so we don't know the actual length of the of the array so we can assume that it's going to be five that's why we use array dot length to get the total length of the array so now it's basically it's the same thing as writing five here so now we started from zero i equals to zero yeah so is zero less than or equal to my array dot length we know that my array dot length is what is five because i checked but ideally i don't know it's five yeah so see it here is five but i don't know it's because i checked it that's how i got to know there are some code base that you might be working with you just want to it might be 10 20. so now is zero less than or equal to my read dot language is five constant log take this array put the zero here then print out um the value at this index which is j this is zero This is zero so after printing jane out at zero it will now go again one increment i equals to increment i to be one and to now go back one less than or equal to my read on plate which is five that's true it will come here change this guy to one then print out index at one yeah so it will go back again increment this to two is this less than this is true print out two which is web. So if you put it in it to three, it's three less than array dot length, which is true. It will print out orange, which is as position three. So now it will now go again, increment the what's the code? Um the value to four. Is four less than array dot length? Yes, it will now change this to four. Then it will now print out apple. Yeah, at position four. So now it will now go again, increment it to five. Yeah. So it's five less than or equal to to array dot length. Somebody. False. Equals to. 
Five. Why is it fours? Five. What was the question? Five less than four. or equal to five. No, it's true now. Five less than or equal to five. Five is not less than equal to, is not less than five. Five, but five is equal to five. So it's true. You understand? Okay. Yeah. You can see it. It's true. Five is not less than five, but five is equal to five. So it's true. So now, since it's true, it will want to put five here and print. But in our array, we don't have anything at five. You get that is why it's printing undefined. So if you don't want it to get to that level, all you have to do is just remove this so that the last condition will not be met. So now, if we leave it like this now, it will not, this last condition, when it gets to four, when it gets to five now, if I say five less than five is false, because five is five, five is not less than, one of them is not less than each other. So it's false, so it will just break out of, out of the loop. So we got the gist now, right? Yeah, gradually, when you, when you start practicing with it, you, you get the concept very well. So now yeah. we can move on, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I want Sorry, us to finish can I ask something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, please. But there are instances where we can use i is equal to one if it's not like in the context of using an array, yeah? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Because yes. in one of the assignments that you gave us, I think um last two weeks, um the one that we have to take up the sum of numbers and like okay, okay, result. yeah. I yeah. noticed That's that it. using zero we okay. Yeah. Really that reminds me. Thank you very much. Who who is this person? It's me, Elizabeth. Okay, yeah. Thanks, Elizabeth. I I actually wanted uh, to like solve that um the what was it called? that's um assignment question okay let me quickly do it i said create a function right that sums up so now function then let me say sum up so we are expecting a number any figure yeah let me use number then so what we we'll do is a for loop so you look through that number that you input maybe five seven then you add up everything so from what elizabeth said now you don't we don't probably need to like start from um zero because zero plus any number will still give you that number yeah so that's like when you add um zero to a number it will give you that number that's a pure function on on the, on the side so now we can do for loop i don't want to type much and do for loop this less than or equal to norm that will be passed. Yeah. So I want to say um then I will increment it. So I can just say I uh okay. Let me save. Let me have initial value. Let initial value equals to zero. So I can now say initial value equals to equals to the former initial plus i that is coming. So I can just say, uh, let me just console dot log. That's initial equals and that's initial plus equals to one now. No, is it one that I write? Yes, now. No, it's I. Okay, I, okay. Uh, let me say initial. I can use the result anything. So let me call let me call the function. I actually wanted to talk about this, but I forgot. You can see. So what is going to happen here is, this is what it's going to do. 
when I call the function with five, so this five now will come here now. So we now have five here. So it's now going to be I, anything we are doing now is going to be I less than or equal to five. So the first one will go, we are starting from zero. First, we can start from, in fact, let's start from one because zero plus one is still the same thing. So now one will go, I equals to one, then I one less than or equal to this, it will now enter here. So initial is we want to create a variable initial. Then our first initial is coming from here, which is zero plus I, which is going to be one. So we have one plus, no, it's going to be, it's going to just be one then. So now we already have one. This is our initial now to be one. So now it will now go again. Now it will increment it. Then I is now two, right? So now two less than or equal to five. It will now say, um, what is it called? It's true. Then our initial now, the old initial, which is one here, yeah, will now be one plus one. So we now have, no, no, one plus two. We now have three. Yeah, because the first one is one, then the second one now is two. So one plus, one plus, uh, one plus two is equal to three. Then to now go again, to now increment this guy to three now. So three less than or equal to five. Yeah, it's true. It will now come here again and say three plus three. To now be six. Yeah. So it will now go again, increment it to four. Then go again. Is four less than or equal to five? True. It will now enter here. The initial we have is six plus either is coming, which is four. It's now ten. And to now go again, increment four to five. And to now come again, is five less than or equal to five? Yeah, that is true. It will now go again, five plus 10, 15. So it will now go again, I'm going to increment it to six. So go, is six less than or equal to five, which is norm. That will now be false. Then to just break out, then come and console log this. So that is how we go 15. So if I change this value to, let's say, Let's say maybe 45 now. See, see the answer. 1,000, um, 1,035. So the this uh, was because it's going to like run 45 times. So let me even um let me console log. Let me console log at every point. Console.log. Initial. So we can see the value of initial at every point. So now, uh -huh, this is what I was trying to explain the other time. Let me let me reduce it to ten, so that we can see it properly. So we can see one. So it's going to start from one. So one plus two, one plus one. The first one is going to be okay. We are starting from one. Then one plus zero is one. This is the first one. Then it's going to go to two. Two plus um, two plus one is going to be three. Then when it gets to three, three plus um, six is going to be ten. It's going to get to five. Five plus um, ten is fifteen. Fifteen plus six, twenty-one. Twenty-one plus seven, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight plus eight, six plus um, nine to so give us what one until it gets to the last one. Then it's not console that log the last one. Yeah. So this is how to solve the assignment, the last assignment I gave before the last of last week. So um, so let's talk about DOM because of time. This Only time please, really... can you write assignments like just um please. like do again? Thank week you. Week four, right? Yes, week four. Okay, so yeah, we don't have enough time to talk about DOM. I would have loved to talk like plenty about DOM. So somebody should remind me about it. Yeah. Frank, please, I have a question for okay, for on, the Okay, this assignment I did now. Yes. Okay, what the um, um what the um the JavaScript is doing for us is is we add from that one from one 
I mean, from zero. Let's say we start from zero. If we yes. add all the numbers together to the last number that will put everything together. Yes, yes, like, yes. So, the number so, we, um, we pass as, as an argument. Yes, yes. The number will pass as an argument because that's what the question says. So the question said, any number that you put, let's let the addition from that zero to that number. That's if you put 10 now, the number between zero and 10, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you add one plus this plus this plus this until you get to ten. So if I if I put hundred here now, yeah. So it's going to be eleven, twelve, thirteen, eleven, blah 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 blah. So the initials is just to help us to add everything together everything together yes so what this initial basically is doing is take the initial value here that's what we'll store here yeah so the in we want to restore another value inside it again you know when we in uh reassignment re in in javascript when i declare a variable what i can declare a variable as i can declare let let um what's it called age equals to 32 yeah 34 so i can come back here and say that same age to be equals to um let's say 78 yeah i've created the age here now as 34 then i now reassign another value to age here now to be 38 so that's what i'm doing yeah so if i or i can just say this age now this age that is here i want to add another value to you so i can just say age plus 78 so now i've assigned age here to be 34 so i want to reassign it so me of uh, in the place of me reassigning is i want to take the value of the age here and add another value to it so that's basically what we did here so now we created the, the value to be zero so we want to reassign another value to it. So it, this, this is the new value here. Then, but its initial value is zero. Bring the zero. Then we now add maybe one or two or three to it. That's what we did. Okay. So what if the initial is equals to one? What will not happen? That means yeah, you'll be it, adding. It will, it will. It will start it will from one. one to... Yes. So if the if the if the initial is one like this, it that means from the onset you've added one to it. Uh, wait okay wait for easy sorry for easy explanation that means okay this i it's it we had up from one to ten together yes yes but the, in this then initial you cannot add extra one to it exactly because that's what you made to be initial uh -huh. mm. so uh -huh. this initial can be can be anything so the, the question might come like okay after the okay take for instance now you know um in 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 tax um in tax system now maybe they've calculated the old salary that you've earned let's assume this this for loop now is going to loop through january to december yeah so now they've used this one now to calculate how much you've earned so they want to now add another extra money to it so now they can just say let this initial be this so irrespective of how much you've made from january to december this value will still be added to it yeah so now the reason why we made it zero is because zero is nothing. It's more of like you are not adding anything to it, but we just want it to be like that. So I can I can do something like this also. It's going to work. Yeah, but the fact that we did zero like this so that you know that okay, it's expecting a number. So if I do something like this, it's still going to work if I should. Okay, so Malik, just so that minus if you want to decrease the number, okay, maybe. We yeah 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 that's that, that's a very good question also like um if you want to decrease also we can say okay i i minus minus but now mm. if you want to do something like this you will not you have to change this condition because if you are decreasing i this will always be true if i should run this now i probably enter an infinite loop again I don't run it though, don't run it. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I'll probably enter an infinite because if I should do that, I will have to change this condition. So what kind of condition will you now put for, okay, for, now, for Okay, now I can and change then, this. Sorry, 
another question yeah if you are using loop is it necessary that we have to use an increment not a decrement no 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 it depends on how the question is or how the scenario of what you are doing is yeah it might, it might the, there might be another situation whereby um you have an array and they want to like this array now they say you should start from from the last one so now if i want to let me let me come on come on don't tell me you oh shit. Okay, let's assume. Let me just comment this guy out. Let's assume this array that we have now. I want to like um what's it called? Instead of Jane Ray like that, I want to I want to print out apple orange um, in that's descending on the right. Yeah. So in that situation now, I will start from I will start from back. So I want to increment. I want to reduce so my my condition will now be is um we are using less than greater than these dots mm, i think it's going to be greater than and this will now be minus minus yeah oh Consider plug. Where is this coming from? This one is from this. Mm. Okay. So the last one is going to be so you are starting from my array dot length strength why is this not working i equals to five i greater than this okay minus one I'm coming, please. Let me. I is going to be five year. Yeah, five. It's not year. supposed to be minus one. My array, my array dot length, my dots minus one. For the I, for the initial starting point. Yes. No, it's not, it's not working. I'm coming. Let me check. I want to reverse it. So it's going to be this is going to be four, four greater than this, which is which is false. No. Okay, I think we have to change this to zero. Okay, yeah. <laughs> since since we are reversing it, so the thing is a little bit is a little bit um, what's it called? Have to like. Mm. So there is so these are these are ways that you have bug in your code and you have to like think think it through. Yeah. You guys can see I was able to like um so undefined apple orange web ray uh less than less than or equal is it less than or equal to zero okay yeah okay so we can see now so I've I've reversed it so we have undefined 
apple, orange, web, ray, and jane. So let me remove that on the fine. I think that on the fine should come from I less than. Is it I less than or equal to? Yeah, I think it's going to be plus one or so. Plus one or minus one. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. minus one. So, um, so we we'll see now. We we'll see the this um scenario now. If you use minus one, yeah, so you can use plus one or minus one. So what I did is um, we started i from array dot length. So we know that array dot length is five, then minus one, which is going to be four. Yeah. So I'm now asking, is four greater than or equal to zero, which is true. So it's going to print out this. Yeah. So after printing out this, which is going to be apple at i, i is equal to four, then you tonight reduce i to three. I, I, uh, I equals i minus minus, which is three now. So it's to now go again do the same thing print out the next one go again until it gets to when i equals to zero yeah when i equals to zero now to now say zero greater than or equal to zero which is true because zero is close to zero which is true so by the time is now it will now go again to minus one yeah so minus one now will now come here minus one greater than or equal to zero which is for starting to break out I don't know if you guys understand the, the logic. It's just the reverse of what we've been doing before. Do we okay. get the concept? So let me yeah. copy this one and go back to the former one. Paste the two so that. Okay. So Malik, just to confirm, the yeah. initial that you started at zero there, say we started the initial at six. The addition yes. starts reading from six and then six. seven and then eight. No, no, like no, 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 uh -uh, no. The initial is just um what what we are starting from. Where is that distance? Said? Hello, Baba Jay. Let me call you back, please. So the initial. The initial is also, um, where is the code again? This is the code. Oh, we have four minutes left. The initial is just like, just like we want to store what we'll be getting there. Yeah. Is, um, is, um, okay. Initial, okay, let's, let's, let's. Um, yeah, we can hear you. Oh, we lost okay. you for like, yeah, yeah, the cord entered my line. So, um, so let's let's assume initial is my okay, but you understand how, um, the for loop is getting one plus two plus three plus four, right? It's just the yes, initial. Okay. Just, yes, I just thought of something different. Yeah. Say it starts from six or yeah. okay, okay, yeah. So now let's assume, let's assume this initial now is our wallet yeah and i'm going out in the morning so before i get to work let's assume i will i will um i will i will get to five junctions before i get to work yeah so at every junction i will collect the first junction i'll collect one error the second junction i'll collect two error the third junction i'll collect three error the fourth junction like that until i get to the fifth junction before getting to work yeah so now my initial now let's assume is just my wallet yeah so now I have nothing in my wallet. So when I get to the first junction, I collect how much? One Naira. So I put it in my wallet. So when I get to the second junction, I collect two Naira. I already have one Naira in my wallet before. One plus two, give me three. Yeah. So when I get to the third junction, I collect three Naira. I already have three Naira in my wallet before. So three plus three now, so now be six. So when I get to the fourth junction, I collect four Naira. 
already have six nera in my wallet. So six plus four, making it 10. Then when I get to the fifth junction, I collect five nera. Five plus 10 is now 15. That's because when I started initially, I was not having anything in my wallet. But now, if I should have six nera in my wallet now, yeah. So when I get to the first junction, so the initial value I have in my wallet is going to be six nera. That's my wallet. So when I get to the first junction, I collect one nera there. I had that one error to the six nera I have in my wallet. It's now seven nera. Yeah. So when I get to the second junction, I collect two nera. Seven plus two, nine. When I get to the third junction, collect three nera. Three plus um, nine will give me 12. When I get to the um, third junction, I collect four nera. Four plus 12 is going to give me 16. I get to the fifth junction, I collect five nera. Five plus 16 is going to give me 21. So that's that's like adding six nera extra from what I have one okay initially. So now this if I you know you know when it was zero, the answer is going to be um it's going to be 15, yeah. Yeah for five, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now if I should make the initial 16, um should be expecting 21 because I left home with six nera. So if I make the initial to be, let's say, 200, 215, that's because I left them with 200. So you got the okay. concept now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank so that's how it works. So uh, we start from DOM tomorrow because of time. If I should go into DOM now, the time will not be enough. Please, um, Malik, sorry. Can you quickly ask, what's now the difference between Y and um, for loop? Y loop and for loop. It, like, like what Maybe I said. you can just do it quick explanation on it like like what i said said earlier loops are just for you to loop through through um through maybe array or anything why loop they are basically the same thing just that why loop if a condition is met along the way it will break out but for this now for this to break out now it must get to this last condition but for why loop now for why loop now it will have to like um gets to a particular condition before breaking before breaking out i'm coming let me let me cite an example here let me look for example of why loop that would be that would be pretty much easier um I'm still with you. Let me just look for a simpler, simpler example. Why this is less than this? I think I'm mixing it up with um, switch. Um, Oh, it's really never. Line H three. H three eight. H three yeah so um so i think yeah 
while loop and for loop is there much different i think there's no much different but while loop there is a way it does um break out mm. Mm. i'm trying to like see the difference <laughs> in the two of them because they have both starting point and and condition okay let me put equal to yeah, let me see if he's going to like check the last one okay it does so fr from here and i think they are basically the same yeah like this is the starting point this is the condition and this is the increment but i think i think there's the the, the main re the main difference between them is if i can if if i can remember they said while loop will always run once even if the condition is not uh let me see let me see. okay let's start from 10. seriously to me they are the same i can't really see the difference because it's basically doing what <laughs> i think the default loop is easy to work with right yeah the for loop is easy to work with i can't even remember when last i used why it is easy to work with yeah yeah but i think they are basically mm -hmm. the same thing because from this condition that i put now and it's printing out basically the same thing so i think they are the same so um i will drop um what's it called this file on the on the Slack group now. So we'll continue tomorrow. We'll continue from um we'll continue from Dom. Yeah. So I think any other question that we'll talk about now, we'll not discuss loop again because we've discussed for loop uh, extensively. Then we'll start from Dom tomorrow. I think the next question is going to be from from Alabisi. Then we'll talk about this also. Then hopefully we'll be able to like cop um cover more questions tomorrow mm, okay rest operators okay for this case now we've discussed rest operator and spread operator so for tomorrow we'll not discuss it again so we'll just go to anonymous function i think and blah 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 so yeah so um tomorrow we'll continue it's seven already so guys i hope uh, we all understood what we discussed today so tomorrow we'll continue yeah, yeah thank you thank you, so much. Thank thank you. you. right no, 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 I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, no, 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 no,